Hi everyone, good morning. It's Margaret Manning here and welcome to 60 and Me. Welcome to a new day. I hope you're doing great wherever you are in this beautiful world of ours. You know, we have women in 60 and Me all over the world. I think we have about 150 countries represented now. So we have women all over the place, um, you know, different ages, different uh, places in their journey in their 60s. Uh, we have women in their 50s, 70s, 80s, 90s. And it's just great to know that we're all here together, you know, with really one common goal, and that is to find purpose and meaning and fun and friendship <laughs> in our 60s and uh, you know just to find um, a way of uh, you know breaking some stereotypes about what women are like these days once they reach that magical age of, uh, of 60. So anyway I hope you're doing great. I am having my cup of tea this morning. I'm having a choco chai which is in uh, German, it's chocolate, chocolate chai. So I'm having a, a nice dark drink here. It's, a, it's really actually quite interesting to have chocolate in the morning. I was actually just realizing or reading that um, apparently it's very good to have chocolate in the morning and also ice cream. Now, I'm not saying to go running out and getting ice cream in the morning, but you know, every time you turn around, there's some um, <laughs> new piece of research that shows us something we didn't expect. But anyway, chocolate chai tea this morning for me. So I hope you've got something nice to have a drink of as well. And also that you're um, planning something fun for the day. I don't know what you're up to, but it'd be, be great to know what kind of things you're doing. And uh, I, I actually wanted to talk some today about something that um, may be on the minds of many of you, and that is travel, uh, specifically cruising. Do you like cruising? You know, I am, um, like a lot of women, I always said to myself, you know, I'll never do a cruise. It's not for me, not my not my style. But then I actually took a river cruise with Viking and uh, really, really loved it. And uh, I also took another cruise with the Holland America, but it was, um, it was an ocean cruise. And it was, again, beautiful. I really enjoyed the whole experience. But I did learn a few things about cruising and I'd like to share them with you. And as you're getting ready to pack, for a trip on a, on a cruise ship, river or ocean. Here's some things uh, that I learned, well, not say it the hard way, but I learned and like to, would like to share. And it just, it just makes it so much less stressful when you get on the boat and or the ship and you've got everything that you need and you don't have to go running around when you get into dock somewhere or looking you know, for help on, on board. So the first thing is, I mean, this is a simple thing, but we are all so completely addicted these days to our phones and our screens, our digital uh, devices. And the first thing that I always look for when I get on a boat or even in a hotel room <laughs> is how many plugs do I have? And you'll find a lot of these ships were um, were built, you know, years ago, and uh, they they have one or two plugs in the room, and sometimes they're behind the bed. <laughs> so you you know, first thing you want to do is charge your phone, get your uh, maybe your iPad or your reading device charged up, and uh, you know they always have a little TV in your room usually, um, or you can get that. But you know, just where to plug in your phone. So be careful. Um, well, first of all, don't expect a lot of plugs. You know, there's probably is going to only be one or two in your room, and um, they may not be the um, uh, power voltage that you expect because a lot of uh, cruise ships were are built in Europe, so they sometimes have the European um, power supply. So it's always a good idea to take a a, a converter with you. Now, I, there's, there's really cool ones, I should have showed it to you, but there's ones you can get now that are like one device, and then you kind of push and pull little le levers to get it to do um, really every plug in the world from the, from your from what you use. So if you're in the States, you know, you've got a special uh, size plug, and in England, you've got this funky three plug <laughs> um, device. So anyway, just be sure that you look for plugs and you make sure that you've got a converter. Some people suggest that you take a little power strip with you. Uh, I just find that a little bit, a lot, a lot to carry, but you can get fairly small ones, you know, where you can actually do um, like two or three of your devices into one plug. So that might be a good thing to take along too. But anyway, getting care, taking care of being charged up and, and electrified is really, really important on any trip, but a cruise particularly. Another thing is to take comfortable walking shoes. Now this is true, of course, of all travel, but when you, when a lot of ships um, you know, turn up at a port and there's something really cool about getting off the boat and walking into town. 
especially on a river cruise, because they kind of they park, well they park, they, they, they you know, put the put the boat right by the um, the town. I mean, you literally have to walk down the gangplank, turn left, and then you're in the middle of the of the city or town, and that's really fun. Except in Europe, particularly, a lot of um, the streets are cobblestone. And I've had a few little uh, incidents in my life with cobblestones. Um, have a broken arm to remember when I was in Ibiza in Spain, just tripped on a cobblestone. And I've learned uh, in Paris too that you've got to just walk thoughtfully wherever you are. And it's just so for me, the easiest thing is to forget the glamour and the, the, the heels. Maybe take a pair of nice shoes for the evening on boat, on board, you know, for dinner or just to dress up, but take really comfy shoes, sometimes boots even, even in the summer. You just take something that's gonna have ankle support and also help you to navigate those um, those cobblestones. And you know, just be careful. I always, by the way, m admitting my flaws, I always take an ankle brace with me because I tend to be one of these people, I, I either twist or I have a weak ankle. <laughs> That's my problem. I have a weak ankle. So I take um, a little brace, just a, a small one that I can you know, use in an emergency. If it get, There's nothing worse than being in a beautiful new place and feeling like you're not comfortable, that your foot or your ankle hurts. So anyway, that's the second thing. Um, then another thing to think about are seasickness pills. Now on a river, river cruise, you don't find this as much a problem because it's, it really is pretty much like floating on glass. You very rarely get rough seas on a river, but you do sometimes get little waves that make you feel a bit nauseous. And then certainly on an ocean cruise, you can expect now and again to get a little bit of bumpy sea. Now, the, the um, ship um, receptionist will normally help you with this. I've, I've actually never had to buy them or pick them up from the front desk because I always take them with me. But be careful about um, asking for any kind of medication because if it's a small ship, they won't be able to help you. Um, and this applies for your medications as well, but I'll mention it here, which is if you um, take medicines, first of all, be sure that the seasickness pills don't conflict. That's important. And secondly, be sure that they um, that you take some because often on a small ship with no doctor, they are not allowed by law to give you anything that is even medicinal, not forget prescription. It's just they don't have, they can't give you ibuprofen or paracetamol. They, they really cannot dispense any medicines. So be careful about that because um, I happened to me actually on a uh, river cruise. I got a bit of a headache. I went down in the middle of the night to get a... a aspirin or something from my head and they said we can't give you anything and they were really sweet and of course there wasn't a doctor on board so that explains it probably but I had to wait till the next day to go in when we got to the next place and pick up some aspirin so um, just beware beware of that and of course along with this goes your medications be sure that you take enough for your whole trip I always take a week extra and I stick that in my um in my backpack or my my bag, my, my carry-on, so that I do not go for a few more than a few days without my pills. I don't have that many, but I just it's just nice to know that if the luggage was delayed or you know something happened, you'd have a little um, uh, source for your medica medications. Also, another important thing is to pack your prescriptions. Um, go to your doctor and ask him or her to write your prescriptions out, um, and then photocopy it. Leave one at home, take one with you, because um, that's super important, especially in some um, cities in the world where there is more restriction on medication. In Asia, for example, you know, be careful because if you're carrying pills without any uh, prescription, they may hold you or, or confiscate them. It's really important to think of that angle with medications. In the States, it's pretty straightforward, but when you're traveling abroad, you know, just beware. And uh, as I said, leave a copy of your prescriptions with uh, someone back home, just in case you um, lose it or you, know, you just need to um, prove that what, you know, what you need to have refilled. That's kind of important. Now, I, the next thing is I've never been a real big fan of hand sanitizers and antibacterial wipes. I just think they cause more problems than they're worth um, in terms of bacteria, you know, but anyway, that's my thing. But um, it's, it's really good to just tuck a little um, uh, uh, jar away or a little bottle away for you, especially on cruise ships, because cruises, um, you know, people are touching those railings all the time. There's so many people on most of these big ships that you really are taking a bit of a risk 
by not making sure your hands are clean. Just just pack those and then just, of course, the, remember what your mom told you, just wash your hands every everywhere. <laughs> just wash them, you know, when you eat, uh, before you eat. Wash them when you get back from a, from the street, um, you know, from the uh, city tours. And just, just be conscious that there's a lot of people, uh, even 200, you know, it's not what you're used to. You're not used to coming into in touch with that many people every day. So just be careful. And I know it seems antisocial, but I actually don't shake hands on the cruise either. Or if I do, I'm just careful to just kind of wash my hands after. No offense, and it's nothing like personal. It's just that there is so much um, in the way of bacteria on these big ships. So be careful on cruises. All right, so here's some backup items. Now, I, um, I I don't sew, I'm not a sewer, but I do have a cute little sewing kit. It's actually quite sweet. I bought it in a, a little antique store and it's only very small, but it's got scissors and a tape measure and pins and a needle. And I always take one um, because I just take less, I mean, I, wear, I take a few clothes. I don't take much when I travel, I'm a light traveler, but I just like to be able to fix that one or two items that I've got rather than saying, oh my gosh, that zipper broke or, or the button's Come off I've got to go buy a new pair of something and it, sometimes you can just make do you know the, another little secret that I've always learned is staplers if your hem comes undone you can always staple it I know it's kind of a funky idea but you know just what is it necessity is the mother of invention <laughs> I'm sure you've come up with lots of ideas now another thing I'll remind you here and it's of course the obvious one let's don't forget your passport uh, you'd be surprised how many people do but the most important thing with passports is to remember that they are, they have to be, um, they can't expire within I think six months of your, of your trip for most countries, especially those that need a visa. So if you need to get a visa and you need to check either on at the country or before, you just have to make really sure uh, that, uh, that you are, um, that your passport's up to date and doesn't expire for another six months really really important and this is the thing I mean forgetting your passport basically you're done I mean you don't have a trip you can't travel without one you'd have to and I do make copies of my passport but that doesn't work and on cruises don't forget you're normally um, going to a number of different countries so everyone maybe has a little different rule and you just have to be super careful that um, you know that you're prepared another thing don't forget your sun hat your sunglasses and your sunscreen well, hopefully if you're cruising in the summer, you're going somewhere that's gonna be warm, so that would be wonderful. And uh, you'd be surprised uh, getting on the top of those cruise ships on the open decks, how the sun shines down. And don't reflect, don't forget the water reflects the heat too, reflects the sun. So you can go stand outside, feel like you're covered up, but that water is absorbing and bouncing the sunlight back on you. So you can get pretty burned with, uh, well, you know this from being at the beach. But anyway, on a cruise, it's a good idea to not forget your sun hat if you've got one. Good excuse to buy one, I guess. Uh, but sunscreen and also especially on your face, just make sure that you take care of your face and your, and your shoulders and those, those areas that are really going to be exposed. Finally, on a cruise or any trip, I always get a big kick out of going and buying some really bright ribbon to put on my suitcases. Just put something on your suitcase to make it stand out. Now on the river cruise um, with Viking, they come and gather up your, your baggage on the last day and they bring it down to a holding area in the in the uh, you know the lobby. I don't know if everyone does this, but this is what I experienced. And of course, everyone's got black suitcases, black boot, black um, backpacks. So I always put like bright pink or turquoise or some really funky color or strips of ribbons if you want to be be colorful. And just make sure that your bag is like nobody wants it <laughs> because it's just too crazy, and it's got a something that really helps it to be um, recognized. That's an important thing. And the other thing I also do, I'm sounding a little bit neurotic here, but I think it's important, is I always take a picture of my luggage. Just as I'm going out the door, I take a picture of my bag and um, of course I know what brand it is so I can describe it if it's lost. And um, you know, yeah, just then just go off and enjoy your beautiful cruise. But um, I hope that's helped you or been at least a little thought provoking about what you need um, if you're going off on a cruise this year. And if you are, I would love to know where you're going and you know just how excited you are. Tell us about your cruise plans. I think that would be really, um, really fun to share um, our stories. So anyway, I hope that you've got some fun, fun travel planned wherever you are. 
as I always say, even to the next village, next town, around your city, it's a state of mind. And you, another thing, in a lot of cities and towns, there are boats, there are um, you know, small ferries that take you places. Go on them, pretend you're on a cruise to the Mediterranean. It's okay, we can fantasize and have fun. Anyway, I hope that really is useful information. I do hope that you have a fabulous day. And I'd like to ask you, uh, have you got any tips that you would encourage women in our community to pay attention to when they're on a cruise? What would you add to our cruise packing list? Okay, everyone, we'll have a really wonderful day. I've got my um, sun hat on here. I'm going to put it on and getting ready for my cruise. And I hope to see you all again real soon. Take good care, everyone. Bye-bye for now.